Hello everyone, in this particular video we'll be going over circles. So I'm just going to delete the cube and add a plane. And the first thing we'll do is just right click and just place a loop in the center. And for the purpose of this example we'll also inset it so that way we can just crease the boundaries and crease these lines as well. And then we'll be put levels of subdivision on it uh, via pressing control 1, 2, 3 to jump the subdiv levels up through the various levels, we'll be able to at least have our boundaries held. Uh, we can press Alt-V as well to turn on wireframe in order to see it, and this will be our base shape. So the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate over, and the first point I want to make in this video is that uh, basically to create a round shape, all you have to do is just keep the uh, simplest form of it basically being a box. So in this first example, you can see that there's actually too many loops present, but when I remove them and it's at its simplest form, just at one, two, three, four around, we're able to really easily create a circular shape. So sometimes um, a circular pattern is just nothing more than just boxes. So let's just shift D, duplicate this um, on the X axis. And I'm gonna select, uh, let's see, everything in the center, and we'll just remove it and we'll dissolve it up to here as well we'll just press i and from here we're just going to subdivide 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 however we don't want subdivision sh showing in edit mode and we're just going to select some checkerboard points just to uh, really illustrate this point and just press i to inset we'll press q mark it and extrude it down which will give us this marked as well and then of course the result is that we have created this pattern that is built up out of circles just being offset and really that's all it is to it so sometimes whenever subdivision modeling or all quad modeling is a thing I'll just simplify circles to being just squares so that way subdivision will be able to handle all the work of making a box into a circle and usually by taking it through just a couple of levels of subdivision that will suffice so now let's move on to a more advanced uh, situation so we have this shape we want to turn off subdivision, and when it comes to circle inside of hard ops, there's multiple circles. There's um, the one that you get when you just regularly click it, which will get rid of the point in the center. But if we were to shift click it, it brings up this alternative type of circle, which is kind of unique. So to just start off this example, we'll just bring the shape in, uh, indiscriminate count of points going on here. And also we... Um, messed up our sharpening here so we can just unmark that and then just mark the boundary and so now we have this area creased if we look at it topologically we see that that's not entirely suitable so let's talk about actually making it suitable so I'm just going to grab these boundary edges and we'll just press Control B and then of course to minimize the work we'll use a bisect mod and to split it two ways, of course, placing it at first. So now our work is literally only down to the single corner. So first thing I'll do is bring this point and connect it. We'll bring this point and connect it. We want to offset and connect this one. Basically, we have a dual quad formation going, which basically holds this form together. So. You know, when it comes to subdiv modeling, you want it to be able to hold the form indiscriminate of creasing um, because creasing isn't always available to you in whatever application you go to. So normally you want to have it topologically solved where it actually creases for you, um, as I'm showing here. We'll press K and just use knife, you know, just using vanilla tools at this moment and just clicking and pressing E, pressing enter. And here we have made this area basically all quad. So we look at what we have so far, just kind of messing with our examples. And I'm just showing how we can basically protect the perimeter and solve it inside of it to actually reach an all quad solution without us having to have a bunch of um, extra loops going outside the perimeter. Because if we were transplanting this into a larger form, we could easily put this piece in, which would probably be the most optimal because the geometry is uh, equally distant and is in its simplest form. But we could even take something like this and transplant it because 
topologically, it's using the exact same amount of points around the pound trees as this one. So I'm going to shift D duplicate this over and we'll do the next one. And keep in mind that at the point that I'm using circle, I'm not using it with a boundary. If you were to say, take a circle and try to use it with a boundary, you might run into issues. So there's a reason for the particular order that's being employed here. So what we'll do is actually roll it up to something even higher, something just irritating. And we'll just talk about solving this. Of course, um, this is one of the situations that you want to avoid. Um, it's very common for new users to want to cut everything using a 32 round cylinder, which is, um, for all intents and purposes, a rather expensive shape. So simplifying things is definitely the more optimal route. However, um, 3D in itself is a learning experience. So the rules are made to, you know, be tested by you, the users and, and broken, you know, as you see fit, because everyone's always looking for a, um, unique way to approach things. And even these videos that I'm doing is kind of showing you the way that I approach things myself personally. And I'm hoping to, um, kind of pass some of that knowledge on to you to users. So if we look at how many verts is in this selection, we look like we have a um, unequal amount. In fact, we have 12. So that means that we could solve like so. And you know, why not? We'll just solve both of them like so. Put a point here, select both of these, diamond quad it, slide that in not the most beautiful solution, but definitely solved to the point where our perimeter is protected. However, let's get rid of our force fields, which is the creasing that's being used here. Let's select this one, this one. We'll jump into select tool, just press B to just put a quick spacer bevel in there. And as I work, we're just quantifying this area just to um, make it simple for the bottom. We could be using face fill and a myriad of other blender tools, but um, when it comes to topology, sometimes I find myself using some of the most simple vanilla tools to get from point A to point B. So now you see that we've um, solved a series of circles here using um, pretty much the same solutions of ensuring that everything is solved within the boundaries without exceeding things. Um, there is, of course, a very alternative route to all of this that has not yet been explored. So we're just going to take this shape and just clean mesh. And we'll just right click, subdivide, shift R to repeat. And let's just remove some points. We'll just grow this, delete it, um, contr control or alt shift S one in order to turn this to a sphere. We'll grow it out a little bit more. F, control alt shift S, I, extrude. And so we'll just delete the bottom and we'll just use classic grid fill. You know, I use this thing more often than I'm implying in this video, but we want to offset it to get it something flat. And we could also alt X and, um, you know, begin bisecting this thing. And the, this area will be an easy one to give a, a boundary to protect. However, the bottom won't be. So the easiest way to deal with something like this, if it was me personally, is I would just press I, press B to use boundary, maybe bring it in just slightly, but then scale it the rest of the way. However, we'll need to um, snap our cursor there and even set our pivot point there as well. We'll undo helping me out there. And once we put a loop here, we can start to uh, just kind of alleviate some of this a little bit. It doesn't really matter. It's just the bottom of it. And Blender has just ended our career. You know, sometimes that happens, but like any good Blender user, we're going to jump right back in it. So let's see how autosave did us. Autosave. Nope. Autosave. Nope.
auto save. No. Auto save, yes. So here we are back in the game. And we'll actually save the file this time. Call this Topo Study. And where were we? We were put in a loop here just to protect this area. We had a loop there. We had our cursor snapped here. We selected all of this and we, you know, let's just press E and we will just scale it at the 3D cursor. And that's the easiest way to just give that some boundary. And we can just turn that back off because it'll get annoying later. And so, you know, saving the file, we now can add subdiffs to this. And of course we want everything to be smooth shaded so we can see it in its best light. Let's press Alt V, turn off wireframe, and really just inspect the various results that we have here. Uh, for this one, uh, th that's us letting auto smooth handle things, but if auto smooth's on, um, it's not going to look like that. So let's say that we did want it to look like the ones that we already have. You know, remember this one was just a cube. And, you know, having all these red lines increasing is a way that you can work, you know, if you're just strictly using Blender. But um, when it comes to working with other applications in Sub D, you probably want to go ahead and use boundary loops. You know, you're already dealing with keeping a topologically sound mesh. You might as well make it work everywhere so now we have something a little better in fact to place this exactly where that one is we'll just use reset axis and we'll hide the original so now we have these very similar looking circles and i'll even go into perspective mode and we'll just take a look at these just across just to uh kind of compare what we're looking at because it's an age-long debate about, you know, solving circles and topology and things like that. And so I wanted to do a video just kind of breaking down how I solve circles, how I approach them. I've done a lot of videos talking about topology in general and how I solve curvature. And so some, these are some of the fundamental ideas behind how I approach various things when it comes to topology. Because even Booleans require rules in order to ensure a successful operation. This one is uh, also a fun one. Let's say we wanted to get in and solve this. Um, I would, the thing about using um, subdivision as well is that any geometry that's a triangle will be turned into a quad automatically. So we could just leave it up to chance and use modifiers in order to let that be helped by us. So what I mean by that is if we go in and we give it a triangulate and we put it before the subdivision, we see that everywhere that there is an end gun has been solved into a triangle, which is now being solved into, you know, this shape. So this is now a subdivision slash all quad form. I mean, if you don't believe me, let's shift D, move it over. And we want to apply maybe one level of sub D on this because otherwise it will look very dense. It will look a lot denser than this image that we're looking at. In fact, the truth of this is that so we don't want that we want to apply instead one level of subdivision and if we take a look at this we see that there there's edge flows everywhere because everything that was a triangle is now a quad but there's better ways that we could solve it to assist that that transition and that's just by getting in and just joining select areas and just helping ease some of these some of these poly flows in fact Whenever I see these sort of steps coming up in the workflow, I'll try to preempt them by at least buffering them so that in the event that I want to come back and replace this later with something even more streamlined, I can. And you can see how creasing as well will assist it with holding the boundary, at least helping the form make just a little bit more sense. In fact, I'll have to catch these cross edges to really crease it the way that I want. However, as we can see, there's some limits to that. So continuing on let's just grab a few more of these points join them we're pretty much just working on this single quadrant and then we'll see what the modifiers do with these other four so this is the area that i'm working and these are the areas that are handled by the triangulate modifier so just to show you that you can use it to help you but there are times where you will reach the limits of what it's possibly able to do so I'll actually slide this piece and you know I'm always trying to mess with 
the result just to see if there's something even better that can be obtained. So M last, we'll do the same thing here, merge these at last, you know, getting a little sidetracked, but now we've at least alleviated that area. So we could do the same thing here. Sometimes just having two buffer loops just isn't going to be as assistive as you think it is, but there's always a way to kind of get these things to work is the case in point. So back to looking at this. So now let's talk about deformation. So if I were to shift a at a curve circle, we'll just scale up the circle and just really matter where we have it. I'll alt G reset it. Let's first um, duplicate this one. And we want to array this around this circle. So first we'll um, set up our array. I'll press V to get out of 3D because when you're not in 3D, you can press one and it'll slap an object continuously in an array. And so we can select both of these curve modifier and using F9, we can find which axis it actually needs to be on. And so with the curve itself, control T nine zero, we can see that, you know, this mesh is getting rather bent up. And this is one of my favorite aspects of Blender to mess with is curve deformation because when you initially deform an object along a curve, you think everything's just going to be peachy, but um, for curve to be absolutely smooth, it would probably need to be first in line, but it can't be that way because of the particular modifier order being needed to be in that order because of the way that we work. But if we look at our curve, we have only 12 segments. Let's raise this up to something astronomical like 128. And we see that now it deforms a lot better. You know, normally this would set users up to think, hey, this just isn't going to work. It's not going to look right at this sort of level because of the amount of subdivisions. You can see all these hits and areas where we tried to be topologically smart and it just didn't work out because it's just not flowing in the direction that we're trying to deform it. But if we were to press Q and actually change this to something like 128, we see that, you know, it's not perfect, but darn well looks a lot better. So let's um, duplicate this curve over. Let's talk about the next piece. So this one, we'll just bring it up and we'll array it and press V and one and roll the wheel pressing one. And we probably want to just set that up one more time and let's deform this. In fact, let's use the Q menu option just because we have the F9 there. And let's take a look at this one. So this one, you know, still fares a lot better. I can see a little bit of torsion happening up in this area. I mean, it could just be a hallucination. It is kind of late at night, but let's press Q and actually, and, and this one is already set to 128. If we set it to 12, this is what you would normally be getting when you deform it a longer curve. So it's just important to take in, keep in mind that the curve resolution is also going to be affecting your deformability. So if we take this, jump it up to 128, you see that this is looking a lot better and we didn't even have to adjust the subdivision level of the actual object itself. And so because the rest of these are getting uh, subsequently denser, you can of course assume that the results are gonna be pretty much in the same area. So with this curve, we're gonna reset it back to 12, but we're gonna grab this shape, you know, the most questionable one of all, and one that I was thinking about just not talking about anymore for the video but let's give it a test. So I'm just going to set up some arrays and we'll select both of them, curve modifier. And of course the results are exactly as you would expect. The shape is just not going to deform very well along this curve that, you know, normally isn't even taken into consideration, but in all honesty, it's very simple, at least as far as the segments and the interpolation of that to point. So if we just go in, raise this up to 128, we see that we're able to get a lot further with this than we were previously. So just a moral of the story, um, you know, just wanted to do a video talking about topology and circles and curvature and the curve modifier and using hard ops and I guess also dealing with a crash. But with that, I'll wrap up this video. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.